Mary Circa Neal, an American orthopedic surgeon, experienced a kayak accident while enjoying a vacation in Chile. After the canoe she was in flipped, her body remained submerged for 15 minutes, a dramatic time span that offered her the opportunity to have a near-death experience. Despite this, that trance had another disturbing consequence. Certain angelic entities began communicating with her, foretelling devastating events. Next, we will see the chilling premonitory experience of Mary C. Neal. Year 1999. The Chilean summer welcomed Mary Neal and her husband with open arms. They were kayaking, in fact, they were experts in the field. But, that day, this surgeon from Wyoming was going to face death in that river. A dramatic accident left her trapped in a torrent. Submerged under the water, she desperately tried to lift her head above the water to breathe, but quickly realized there was nothing to be done. Rescue attempts were futile, and her friends soon realized that their efforts to save a life were turning into a mission to recover a body. Finally, after about 14 minutes, they managed to retrieve her body, bruised and swollen. Immediately, they began to perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation on her, but some of those present even advised them to give up, as if they managed to revive her, she would only be a vegetable. However, Mary started breathing again. With her kneecaps and ligaments in her knees broken, she refused to receive treatment in Chile. She wanted to return to the USA as soon as possible, to be attended to at Jackson Hole Hospital, where she had good friends and could be reunited with her children. However, given his health condition, the return journey was a nightmare. Barely conscious, he arrived at Jackson Hole with advanced pneumonia and acute respiratory distress syndrome. This inflammatory reaction of the lung tissue usually develops within 24 to 48 hours, interfering with the ability to exchange oxygen and often leading to death. With a solemn tone, my internist told my husband that I probably wouldn't survive that night. Mary Neal wrote a book titled, Heaven and Back, in which she recounted her experience in great detail. Thus, the moment of her death is described as follows. It was as if I had been liberated from my soul. I rose and emerged from the water, instantly crossing the surface where I encountered a group of about 15 to 20 human souls or spirits that, in my opinion, were sent by God. They welcomed me with the greatest jubilation I had ever experienced or could have imagined. I couldn't identify each of the spiritual beings by their own names, but I knew they were emissaries of God and that I had known them for eternity. In addition, I explain how I felt when experiencing this sensation very close to death. I always believed that drowning would be a terrible way to die, but for me, it was painless, without fear, peaceful. I didn't feel any moment of fear or longing for air. I didn't feel any pain, even though my legs were broken. In fact, I felt marvelous. Furthermore, the surgeon described the spiritual beings she observed as radiant bodies whose presence filled all her senses, allowing her to communicate with them without the need for words. From the place where she was, surrounded by spiritual entities, she could take a look at her body, lying in the river, with which she did not fully identify. Instead, it seemed more like an old shell. She continued her journey accompanied by these beings until she reached a kind of beautiful and transparent room. There, according to her, she could feel the pure, absolute, and unconditional love flowing everywhere. I understood that I was ready to enter the room and longed to be with God again. However, a significant obstacle stood in the way. Tom Long and his children kept asking me to return. Every time they pleaded for me to breathe and come back, I felt obligated to return to my body and breathe once more before continuing my journey. This became tedious, and their insistence caused me quite a bit of irritation. I was upset that they wouldn't let me go. Nevertheless, I pressed on to achieve entry into that magical room when suddenly an oppressive feeling of sorrow and sadness fell upon my companions, and the atmosphere became heavy. They explained that it wasn't my time to enter the hall, that my journey on earth wasn't over, and that I had more to do, 
so I needed to return to my body. Mary did not like this news, but she had to return, with the promise that she would soon receive more information, which happened. In the Jackson Hole Hospital, while lying in bed, pondering the purpose of her accident, she received a visit from an angel. Or so it seemed to her, although she didn't know if it was an angel, a messenger, or even Christ himself. In any case, she was convinced it came from God. They had a conversation in which Mary mentally noted important spiritual teachings that she interpreted. On her second visit, the supposed angel explained some of the reasons they had sent her back to earthly life. According to the mysterious entity, Mary had to share her story and experiences, help others find the path to God, and above all, be a strong support for her family after her son's death, which was news that impacted her greatly. As we can see, Mary Neal had returned to life, but not to a normal existence, but to another one in which she received visits from strange beings whom she identified as beings from God. But, what if these were actually hallucinations? Could the pain sedatives be causing those entirely unusual sensory perceptions? Logically, knowing that her son would not live to reach 18 years old was an almost unbearable burden. One month before Willie turned 18, the unease turned into constant anxiety. Her son had a minor car accident, and while dealing with the insurance paperwork with the other party involved, he called his mother to share the situation and seek advice. Willie asked the other driver if he wanted to speak to his mother on the phone. It was at that moment when the man pulled out a gun, and there was a tense moment. Mary, distressed on the other end of the telephone line, shouted at her son to run away from there. Nothing happened, so she believed that despite what the angel had told her, Willie would not die at that moment, and the course of his life had changed because she had come back from death and had been there, on the other side of the phone, to tell her son to stay away from danger, possibly saving him from a deadly gunshot. However, she was mistaken. Willie celebrated his 18th birthday, but he passed away the following year in a skiing accident. It was an extremely tough moment, and the account we found in the pages of her book reveals the enormous pain caused by the loss of her son. But how did she dare to share such an intimate and personal experience with the rest of the world, even going so far as to publish it? Mary responds by saying that this book is very personal and not something she would have chosen to do under normal circumstances. My husband and I have always been reserved people, and I don't know anything about writing, and the truth is, I don't feel comfortable speaking in public. However, when they sent me back to Earth, I was given the mandate to share my experiences with others and help them transform their hope or faith in God's promises. Writing, heaven and back, was the obedient response to what God expected from me. I know it's a very private and often painful story to share, but at the same time, it's a privilege because I can help others achieve their transformation. We cannot deny the messianic nature of this response. Nor do we suspect that this distinctly Christian message is a product of chance. Mary spoke about angels, Jesus Christ, heaven, God, and we know she was a leader in her church and did not hide her connection to the Christian religion. Additionally, she mentioned an important message. Near-death experiences occur in all cultures, all faiths, and even among atheists. In fact, 50% of non-believers report encountering Jesus during these experiences. Mine was a Christian experience, but they are very private events, and I do not intend to dictate what others should or should not believe. However, I do know that God loves us regardless of who we are or the particular circumstances of our birth. Taking for granted the fact that near-death experiences can be so different from each other in terms of setting up scenarios and describing narratives, how did Mary feel during hers? She mentions that she doesn't have the language to adequately describe what heaven is like because she believes it's like trying to describe a three-dimensional world using a two-dimensional language. However, she can perceive a fullness of beauty and colors, but with an intensity far removed from any experience she could have had on Earth. I visualize all the colors of the rainbow and more, all at the same time. 
I saw them, felt them, experienced them, and understood the essence of all the shades, whose aromas I was capable of perceiving. The scent of the flowers was equally magnified, and everything seemed to explode in the midst of a complete, penetrating love for God that encompassed everything. I believe that God sends His kindest messengers to collect us at the moment of our death and speaks to us in a way we can understand and appreciate. For example, everyone who goes through a near-death experience describes a great beauty, but the details of that beauty vary depending on who expresses it, just as it happens on earth. I respond to color, flowers, aromas, etc. Other people may respond more to music or animals, and that's what they exalt. But we all describe the palpable love of God. It is not the first time that a doctor has had experiences of this kind close to death. Anatomy Professor Francisco Martinez Soriano, Doctor in Medicine and Surgery Miguel Angel Pertiera, and neurosurgeon Eben Alexander, among others, have real and striking testimonies of this type. This last person gave testimony of their case, and despite having declared their skepticism towards this kind of experiences, they radically changed their opinion when they experienced it firsthand. In fact, Alexander wrote a book precisely titled, Proof of Heaven, highlighting his conversion. It is often said that there is a before and an after following an experience of this kind. People who have lived through it assure that it is so. The thing is, regardless of the nature of that brief intrusion into the other side, it causes its protagonists to return to life changed, and Mary Neal's case is no exception. After all, those individuals who had the opportunity to be protagonists of these experiences are fortunate to possess privileged information about a place that very few have access to. With all that said, I conclude the video. Don't forget to support the channel by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. See you next time.